Top of the day to you, I'm Locum23, you're joining me for Elementalist Book 2, Chapter 17, Ray of Light. A few days after your battle with Kane, you and Alice walk a fully healed Gemma across the Pendergast grounds. All around, students enjoy their last day of the school term. Ezekiel, heads up! This one's coming in fast! Catch Haley's Brisby and fling it back with a burst of sun magic. You might want to put on your sunglasses for this one. As the Brisby sails away, you turn back to Gemma. So you are definitely got all your memories, source powers back for sure now? Nothing's missing? Nothing is missing. Now that Kane is sealed, we sources can finally rest easily. I feel a connection to them all again. Except our mom. That's the strange part. When I reach for Thea's signal, I'm just drawn back to you two. I think it's because you absorb so much of her magic when you grab the crystal from Kane. I just wish it had brought her back. <laughs> Tim nuzzles affectionately against her leg. Tim is right. We can't give up yet. Now that things are calming down, we have a whole summer to look for her. But they would never abandon those she loves. I know you'll all be reunited. You'll get to be family again. I wish Elma was around to unseal her. That would have sped up this whole process. That's true. Knowing that it was Alma who sealed Thea, it must have been so hard for both of them to be in that situation. I'm looking. I'm going to look for Alma's scattered atoms. The longer she drifts untethered, the harder it will be to bring her back together. Do you actually know how to gather her atoms and everything? Wasn't she the only one who could make your human forms? Yes, but I think if I can get her atoms together, the rest of the sources will be able to figure something out. How about Alma? Maybe she's better off not found. No. You really think you'll find her? It's already been almost a week. Her atoms could be anywhere. They could be everywhere. I think it'll be difficult, but nothing can be difficult as regaining my memories and sealing Kane a second time around. I won't give up. Walk her to the edge of the lawn where she turns and grins wide at both of you. Well, I guess this is goodbye. For now, at least, something tells me our paths will cross again. Actually, we have one more thing to give you before you go. Dean Joffe gave it to us when she tasked us with finding you. I think she'd be happy if you had a... You hand her Dean Joffe's locket. Gemma gazes down at the hazy picture of herself and loops a chain around her neck. I'll always keep it with me. Thank you for your kindness this year. You are incredible humans, and I'm honored to know you. With a parting wave, she turns around and walks towards the wards. As she passes through them, a burst of light momentarily blankets the campus. You blink your eyes clear, and Gemma has disappeared. Well, I guess that's it, huh? Not every day you can say you've seen off a source. Not every day you can say there you've got a thief championship to win either. Come on, let's get you to the arena. Alice walks you to the Thief Stadium, which is already decorated for your final match against Gildegrave. Several hours later. Suck it, Gildegrave, the trophy is ours. No, you can't! Yes, we can. The crowd erupts in cheers as you hold the Frost King's flag high above your head. Zeph and War jump around in celebration as the Frost King stalks off. We did it! This is our... Third championship win in a row! Ah, triple crown, baby. The Drexmeers are officially historic. The rest of your team sprints over to celebrate, with Everett leading the pack, pumping his fist in the air. Genius call with the last play, Langley. Having Ezekiel use illusionary magic to faint the Frost King was epic. Thanks, Cam, but it was a team effort. The play wouldn't have worked without Zeph, Ezekiel, and Ward there to pull it off. You're talking like a captain already, and it's making me even sure of my decision. I'm leaving the team to you. He holds that hand towards Griffin. Get us another win next year, Captain. Whoa, slow down. You sure you uh, want to make this decision right now? Maybe wait until the adrenaline wears off. No way, man. Adrenaline always makes my decisions for me, and it's never failed yet. And today onward, the Drixamers are in your hands. Griffin's shock melts into a smile. 
In that case, I appreciate the offer, Cam. But, um, hand and capacity? Captain Nicity over to Zeph. He's the one who's really proven himself. What? I can't take that from you. You've put your heart and soul into the team. Me? I care. But I care about disaster relief more. You're the captain we need. Well, it's your decision and mine now. I know to trust what goes on in your head. All right, Hernandez, the team's all yours. Congrats, Zeph. Or should I say, Captain Hernandez. I'll celebrate with... Raving Zeph on a pedestal, dousing it with water. Better hold your breath. You summon the water from the bottles on the sidelines and dump it over Zeph's head. It crashes over him like a waterfall. <laughs> he shakes the water out of his face, out of his face with a laugh. He looks around at his team who cheer their support. Wow, I don't know what uh, if I should give a speech or just start crying. Thanks, Griffin, and thanks all of you. I'll do my best. As families head onto the field to congratulate players, your friends sprint over, waving excitedly. That was the best game I've seen yet. I branched into the grove, and they were on the tips of the roots the whole time. Shreya slides her hand into yours and leaves a lingering kiss on your cheek, her breath fanning against your skin as she laughs. Did you see the Frost King salt go off the field? Definitely the highlight of the game. That was a spectacular final move, Ezekiel. The world of Culligan... Thief now knows that the Frost King is little more than a puddle of water. Atlas punches F on the shoulder with a grin. Well, let's talk about that Captain Hernandez, huh? Good going, Zef. Ah, oh, thanks, Atlas, but uh, guys, the scholarship committee at 12 o'clock. You all turn to find Dorothy Halvern and Teddy Jung waiting. Teddy nods at Griffin, holding out an envelope. For you, Mr. Langley. What's this? Kind of love letter? This is an offer letter. We've selected you for the Fortuna Revelry Scholarship, Mr. Langley. I'm sorry, come again? Dorothy takes a letter from Teddy and puts it in Griffin's hand. You've displayed your commitment to disaster relief extensively throughout the year. The future of the field is bright thanks to you. Griffin won the Fortuna Revelry Scholarship. We would be delighted if you accepted the scholarship and the opportunity it entails. We'll be in touch to discuss this feud further. Griffin gapes after them as they walk away. Then opens the envelope with shaking fingers. He lets out a breathless laugh as he reads the letter. I I really got it, and they're offering me an internship in Maku this summer. Oh, that's fantastic. All of your hard work has finally paid off. This day feels way too good to be true. A scholarship in the natural sciences department and a thief trophy? Locums, locos, we have to celebrate everything that's just happened. We've still got a few hours until tonight's assembly. Pin square, anyone. My followers would love to see the live stream. They're kind of obsessed with all things locums, locos. I've uh, done some snooping, and it's obvious I'm their favorite. I gotta tell them I'm the new thief captain. More importantly, the vendors are having an end-of-year sale. It's a perfect opportunity to purchase rare trinkets. And find something sweet to eat. Make you all there. Last one buys me a ghoul sensor. What is a ghoul sensor? Spend the afternoon in Penn Square with your friends for a final group hangout before the school year ends. Maybe if I didn't know or did know if this was the final book or not. I'd rather relax. I haven't checked Twitter. I've been busy. On second thought, I'm more of a mood for something quieter. I think I'll go take a shower and hang at the dorm. I'll see you later, party pooper. That's me, it's called being an introvert. Wave your friends off and then walk to your dorm. Later that night, you and your friends take seats on the back of the packed dining hall for Dean Swan's year in speech. Ahem, attention please. Dean Swan's voice travels through the room amplified by her magic. I'll keep this short and sweet. I've had an incredible year as your dean, and I'd like to show my thanks by handing out some awards. Firstly, the Thaumaturgy Department's Medal of Excellence goes to Beckett Harrington for his innovations in portal and ward magic. Oh, get that prize, Beckett. Beckett stretched to the front of the dining hall, waving as students cheer. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. It only took ten hours of studying a day. As he accepts his medal with the bright red cheeks, Alice leans his head towards you. 
I bet you ten coppers you're getting something. What do you think it'll be for? I deserve an award for saving the world, obviously. Eh, being a good friend. Friendship it was matters most to me. And again, I guess locums locos already are my award. Ugh, you're gonna get the award for making me barf. But seriously, you deserve an award. Spending this year with you made it obvious you're, like, capable and stuff. Not to mention cool. Sometimes. Aw, oh, what are you saying? You impressed Atlas this year. I'm saying I'm proud of you, you idiot. Don't make me say it again because I won't. He holds up a hand for a high five. Atlas, you are so corny. Clap your hand, Atlas's, but he grabs you tight and pulls you towards him. Before you can react, you find his arms are wrapped around you. Is this a hug? That's what siblings do, isn't it? Now shut up. You shut up and hug Alice back, squeezing him tight. A few minutes later, Dean Swan motions an elderly woman onto the stage. Hmm. I'm gonna go with blood magic related. Who the heck is that? She looks like she's on the verge of death. Normally, I'd tell you it's rude to comment on a woman's age, but I have to agree with you. That's no average elderly woman. That's the high attuned, the most powerful attuned in the entire world. Where was she during this whole entire book? The high attuned and myself would like to honor a group of students who just recently saved our world from certain ruin. Ezekiel Winchester, Atlas Earnhardt, Beckett Harrington, Shreya Mystery, Griffin Langley, Astor DeYou, and Zephyr Hernandez, come up here, please. You and your friends share a shocked look, and then get to your feet and make your way up to the front. Oh my goodness, am I really being given a school award? This is more than I could have dreamed of. As you step onto the stage, Dean Swan ushers you aside towards where she stands with Professor Contos in England. Before you accept your award from the High Attuned, the three of us just wanted to say how proud we are of you. You have an incredible student this year, Ezekiel, and a joy to have in class. And we're especially impressed with how you've been handling your life outside the classroom. Um, thank you, all of you. Having great teachers and mentors makes the work, hard work easy. And also spending diamonds. Your professors nod you towards your friends. You join them at the high attune. Comes forward, back banter, handshake around a plaque. If that source had run free, the world as we know it would have perished. Myself and my council are indebted to your heroic actions. Rise lock on yours, and your magic suddenly swells up within you. What? What are you doing? Your gaze pours into you. Ancient and full of indescribable power, you feel your magic being pulled towards it. Hold my magic in, let my magic out. I can't hold it back. Magic burst out as a wash of sunlight, the night beyond the windows fades, turning your surroundings to day. My magic's acting up too. Moonlight flows out of Atlas, and night, once again, blankets the sky. A shocked silence spreads through the dining hall, but the high tune doesn't look phased. Her gaze moves slowly between you and Atlas. The two sides of the same coin, or the same coin split in two. Your power is unmatched. Unique. I will keep an eye on you twins. With a nod, she turns and hobbles off the stage. You blink and she's gone. What the? Where'd she, where'd she go? What the hell was all that? The High Attuned has immense power, and since you do too, this may have been her excuse to meet you and get a look firsthand. I'd say that you two gave her quite the show. She's bound to be impressed. I just went with it. Some of the audience let out a whistle and the whole school erupts into cheers. That's the spirit I like to hear, and then on that note, I won't keep you cooped up here any longer. The party awaits you outside, Dr. Mayors, so get out there and go for this one night a year. Get crazy. As a student body as a student body streams out into the quad, you and your friends follow at a more leisurely pace. Is the year really over? 
I've barely had time to plan my summer in. Um, easy. And up well, uh, I've been talking about where we want a vacation this year. We're thinking of trying the Bahamas. What nymphs are more trusted than the tune? Okay. I'm going to be introducing Contus the summer classes to the saplings. The elders are finally opening the grove to a tune again. Ah, oh, that'll be a party. Wish I could see it. Katrina's heading off the, this summer to explore some strange magical happenings on the island in the Pacific. And I'll miss you dearly while I'm gone, little brother. Becca jumps as Katrina appears. She gives him a hug. She releases him when she he starts struggling and then turns towards you. Impress Katrina this year, A+. Plus. Ezekiel, an opening on my team if you'd like to join. Let's talk internships after the party, shall we? She heads off with a wave, quickly getting lost in the crowd. Was she serious about offering me an internship, or was that a joke? She's being serious. She was discussing her decision with me earlier. Why is there just a flaming pea in the sky? Huh, you must be so proud of me, the incredible Ezekiel Winchester. Getting invited off to a magical island by your esteemed sister. Though I get the sense you're teasing me, I'm indeed proud of your accomplishments. It takes a lot to impress my sister. Just then, Haley pops up with a grin. Hey, Shreya, just checking if you restocked the lavender bath awning I ordered a couple months ago. Green and Sublime is back in business. I had it sent to your dorm before dinner. It'll be there when you get back. Oh, thanks. Put me on autofill, okay? I use this stuff religiously. As Haley walks away with a wave, every amplifies his voice and calls out across the quad. Hey, Drixamars! Let's play a game of thief. Teachers versus students when the entire school is our arena. Do the professors even stand a chance against us? <laughs> Big words, Ezekiel. We're teachers for a reason. Don't underestimate our capabilities. You're gonna find your professor standing in the entrance to the main building. A little friendly competition sounds like the perfect way to end the year. Pardon me, is this activity mandatory or just extra credit? Because if it's the latter, I prefer not to... Don't worry, Beckett. If you think your magic is a match for your sisters, you can sit this one out. Or don't. Beckett's eye twitches. I will not lose. Everett hands out flags to all the students and teachers. And the game begins. Dean Swan sprints towards the statue in the quad, magic glowing in her palms. I like you all very much, but I'm not about to go easy on you. The statue jumps off its pillar and begins chasing after a group of students that funnels water from the lake at it. I'll slow down the statue. Everyone else, run for your lives. After dodging professors for a few minutes, you and Atlas sprinted to your dorm building. Professor England has a dozen students immobilized and taking the flags. Today's lesson is your professors are a lot more spry than they look. Not spry enough to get out of a mountain of furniture. Atlas launches couches and armchairs at Professor England. But he lets out a jovial laugh and conjures a force field around himself that repels furniture away. Full points for ingenuity, Mr. Earnhardt. But I suggest that next time you don't announce your intentions so loudly. Knock him off his feet. Alice smirks and then lifts both his arms in a sharp motion. You got it. The floor cracks and then starts pitching Professor England back and forth. His arms flail as he tries to keep his balance and his force field vanishes. Sorry, Professor, but you've got something in mind. With one shake of the ground, Professor England topples over, you dart forward and yank off his flag. My dearie has seen better days, but that was good teamwork, you two. Ezekiel, Atlas, quick! I saw Professor Contos running this way! I don't trust you. You dart back outside after Amy. There, Professor Contos blows into a pan flute and a cluster of balloons wraps tight around you. You're looking a little tied up there, Ezekiel. Not so fast, Professor. Shreya sprints out of the greenhouse, flames flying, and at least a dozen flags in her hands. Oh my! Shreya rips off Professor Contos' flag with a roar, and the balloons release you. I fears no one. Nice one, Shreya. I saw one of the thief players take down Swan a few minutes ago. Are there any professors left? Professor Harrington just went into the main building. Aster waves you all into the foyer where you find Griffin and Beckett facing off against Katrina. 
Quick, I'll trap her with the floorboards. You grab her flag when she gets... Before she can free herself. Sounds good. There's no way she can avoid both of us at once. Not so fast. I can't have you ripping my alma mater's floorboards, Beckett. Katrina's wood magic overpowers Beckett's, laying the planks down flat. She dodges Griffin's charge and sprints toward the hallway. You know what? Have the sentry catcher. You heard me, sentry. Give us a hand. Very well, Mr. Winchester. Sentry starts to clunk across the foyer. You're going to have to make it run faster than that. A tree is direction. The sentry sprints across the foyer and catches Katrina in its arms. Oof. I see I've been outnumbered. Aster, catch her flag. Atlas loosens Katrina's flag with a gust of wind. Aster reaches out to Vine to grab it. Did you see that? I got it! A gong sound rings out as soon as Aster grabs the flag, and a disembodied voice announces that the students have won the game. Alright, awesome plays, locum locos. As students crowd into the foyer to celebrate, Tria slips her hand into yours. Hi, gorgeous. It's getting a little packed in here. How about we slip outside before we get trampled? Oh, please and thank you. After you, beautiful. Pretty. It's actually really pretty. Pixelberry has its moments. The two of you walk around the lake, fingers laced together, and at your shoulder against Shreya's. Nice moves getting Contos' flag, by the way. You were fierce during the game. It was super hot. I might have been showing off for you a little bit, hoping you would uh, flatter me and all. Ah, when do I ever miss a chance to flatter you? Never. And that's what I love so much about being your girlfriend. Reach the stone bench and she pulls you down beside her. The lights from the water dance off her face as she gazes into your eyes. Though, that's only one of many reasons why being your girlfriend is my favorite thing in the world. Oh, what are some of the others? Well, there's the fact that you can make me laugh when I need it. Your smile always makes my breath catch, and... Her voice softens, and her smile turns surprisingly tentative. You brush a kiss over her cheek. What's on your mind? I guess I spent so much of my life feeling like I had to outshine everyone else. I had to fix all my flaws and get rid of any shortcomings. But when I'm with you, I feel perfect as I am. And when I make you laugh or smile, it's like I figured out what happiness really is. She tucks a lock of hair behind her hair, but uh, her boldness returns as she looks deep into your eyes. I've never said this to anyone, because no one's ever made me feel this way that you do. What this all boils down to is, well... Ezekiel Winchester, I love you. Tria, I love you too. Like, so ridiculously much. That's out a laugh. It's part relief, part pure delight. I mean, I had a feeling you did, but at the same time, what if I was being a bit too full of myself? You kiss her, burying your hand in her hair. Feeling the warmth of her hands as she cups your face. Impossible. I'm crazy about you. I was trying to find the right time to tell you. I hope you don't mind that I stole your thunder. You kiss her again, softer this time as fireworks pop and spark overhead. Your kiss turns into a smile. You murmur against her lips. And Shreya confessed you love each other. I don't mind at all. I love you, Shreya Mystery. And I love you, Ezekiel Winchester. I don't want this moment to end, but I don't want this to be our last night together. This is only for the summer, and who says we can't visit each other? Oh, of course we'll visit each other, but I'm so used to having you as my roommate, right there. I'm really going to miss that in you. Rests your forehead together, her nose nudging yours, her breath ghosting over your lips. 
I'll kiss her. Sweetly. You twist your head gently, pressing a kiss to her lips. You cup her face in your hands, pulling back to look in her eyes. Don't miss me yet. I'm still right here, aren't I? But darling, time is fleeting thing. Soon enough, you'll slip right through my fingers. Kiss her pout away and till she's giggling against your lips. Then you kiss her cheeks and till she's laughing out, Ryan. But I suppose it would be remiss of me to take this moment, fleeting as it is for granted. Who says it has to be fleeting? We can make it last until the sun comes up, can we? Now you're putting scandalous thoughts into my head. Rest her forehead against yours once more, her lips brushing yours as she whispers. I want you all for myself. For the rest of the night, Ezekiel, I'll make it into a memory that will last you all summer. Rrrr. Make sure you get back to your room for a romantic night. This is your last chance to spend time alone with her in book two. Let them confirming there'll be a book three. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Can we stay here? That's so peaceful and beautiful at her. I want to enjoy this with you. You, me, and a knight ourselves. What more could I ask for? She gets comfortable beside you, laying her head on your shoulder. You rest your head against hers, wrapping an arm around her waist and holding her as the two of you enjoy the night. Not everything has to be about S-E-X. The next morning, Atlas helps you finish packing while Tim curls up on top of one of your suitcases. Wow, Tim. Someone's being helpful. Tim lets out a long yawn and tucks his nose beneath his tail, eyes sliding shut. It's probably so bored, it's because it's taken you a million years to pack your bags. Literally, how are you so slow? Hey! I only have one thing left to pack. Take your mother's pendant off your desk and walk over to your suitcase. In you go. But when you bend to place a pendant in your suitcase, your sun magic bursts out of you. Ah! The Hall of Mirrors materializes around you and Atlas, and a faint familiar voice travels your way. Ezekiel, Atlas, my sons. Ezekiel, that was Mom. We have to get to the Hall of Mirrors. You know, Atlas burst out of the room and sprang across the campus. You crash into the Hall of Mirrors just as the pendant flashes white again, blinding you. Mom. Mom, are you there? Mom! The light slowly fades, revealing a woman standing in front of one of the mirrors. Ezekiel. Atlas, my sons, at long last. Mom? Is... is it really you? Tears fill your mother's eyes as she looks down between the two of you. She nods, a tear streaking down her cheeks, but her smile only grows. Oh, my beautiful sons, look at you, all grown up, and to think you were just babies the last time we were together. Chokes up, and your lip quivers beside you. Atlas sniffs and wipes his eyes. I can't believe it. Part of me thought this would never happen. I kept hearing your voice this year, but I had no idea how to find you. Your mother opens her arms, and you and Atlas rush forward. Warmth envelops you as your mother's arms wrap around you. Mom, you won't disappear again. Nothing will tear us apart ever again. I couldn't live with myself if I left you two alone once more. Places a hand on each of your cheeks, and for a moment, she seems mesmerized that the two of you are really in front of her. I owe you more than a few explanations. Come, why don't you show me around my old school, and I'll tell you everything. You and Atlas head outside with your mom. Everyone else is left for the summer, so the campus is empty and quiet. Rawr. Tim wriggles around in Thea's arms, and she laughs. 
Yes, Tim. I want to hear about when you and Ezekiel met for the first time, but I have to catch up with my sons first. Do either of you know why I was unable to find you for so long? Why everyone believed I died fighting Rafe? When you and Atlas shake your heads, your mother sighs. She looks down at the ground, the ghost of a memory passing across her face. In my source form, I tried to force Rafe to revive your father, but Alma interfered before I succeeded and punished me. When she sealed my magic away, my connection to you and other sources, Evelyn and my magical friends, was severed. I felt so lost. You were all alone. I've been there too. Alice hesitates and reaches out and takes her hand. She squeezes back and then takes her hand as well. I understand why Elma did it. I was straying from the path she believed in, using my source powers in an unthinkable way, but... But Alma still broke our family apart. We grew up thinking both you and Dad were dead. As the three of you walk towards your history of magic classroom, a thought occurs to you. Wait, how did you bind your magic? Or unbind your magic? Cain destroyed Alma and scattered her atoms, so she couldn't have done it. You and Atlas did when you stole the sun crystal from Cain. You unleashed all the magic held inside the crystal and returned it to me. You're saying we were really strong enough to undo a bind that Alma cast? Each of you is half source, not to mention attuned to all the elements. Together your power could match Alma's if you wanted it to. I don't want more power. It feels like the more powerful we get, the more trouble comes our way. I just want to be a normal Toon Junior next year. I second that. I'm dead tired of fighting. Mother gives you both a perceptive look, and for a moment you can sense the source lurking inside of her. Many say a person's blood magic is influenced by their character. Alma says it's influenced by their impulses, whether they act on them. At last, I can sense that you have yet to begin familiarizing yourself with your blood magic. Most of your of its capabilities lie dormant within you. But Ezekiel, your choices this led, have you led to be a pacifist. Your choices have developed a taste for peace. It is not a weapon, but don't let it keep you from acting when action is needed. I, I won't. Why are you telling us about our blood magic? Now that you've come to terms with your true attunement, your refractionary energy has calmed, has it not? Well, it has. I, I can summon it now easily. Ah, uh, so can I. It feels like a part of me instead of something that wants to destroy me. With that, you may even have the power to bind Alma's atoms back to human body, with my help. Wait, what are you saying? This is selfish of me, but I'd like to speak with Alma, to apologize for my wrongs, but all also to tell her where she was wrong. She never supported my choice to live life as a human, to marry a mortal man, and to start a family. And I never stood up to her. I'd like to now. You and Atlas look at each other and share a nod. Yeah, we have a few things to say to her too. Let's bring her back. It's time her whole family gave Alma a piece of our mind. Help your mom revive Alma to have some final words with a blood source. Eh, why not? So, how do we start? Sensing her atoms, blood magic, I'm a uh, fresh prison for to an inhabit. Mother chuckles. I can tell a, I have a lot of modern day humor to catch up on. The two of you should focus on the form she took previously and call that image back into existence. I can use my source powers to sense her atoms. I believe I can call them to me. An ancient power billows around your mother's form, raising goosebumps along your arms, giving Alice gives you another firm nod. We have to get an image of Alma in our heads. Right, now that our magic is in balance, I know we can do this. With your refractionary energy guiding you, you close your eyes, connecting with your blood magic, and then you work on recalling Alma's form. 
Her intricate robes, a pendant around her neck, her stern expression. You can practically picture her standing before you. I've got it. Same. Let's bring her back. Immense power surges around you and Atlas, like it had on the hilltop against Kane. A ripple forms in the air, solidifying a shadow into shape. Good. Now I'll tie her atoms to her form. Just somehow, someway, making a person. With a flash of light, Alma's body solidifies and you suddenly feel her signature. She lets out a gasp, her eyes flying open. What? Wh where am I? You notice your mother. Thea, your magic, it's no longer bound. No, Alma, it's not. And it won't be ever again. My children have freed me from the fate you cast upon me. This is not your path. Alma, why do you get to choose her path? Literally, who made you the boss of everyone? You're just a blood source. You think it's supposed to be blood, only blood. Yeah, my mother's life is her own. It doesn't matter if she's a source or not. She's still her own person. Alma gapes at the two of you, then her expression clouds over. The path is not what kept the world in order. It is what protected... It's what made Ezekiel and I think we were orphans for 18 years. You took our mom's magic so she could never find us. Put a hand on Atlas's shoulder and he takes a deep breath. Though his fists are still clenched at his sides. Alma, maybe you did what you thought was best for the world. But what you think isn't what is right. As long as my son magic is accessible to mortals, why should it matter to you whether I live among them or a part of them? I will stay here, in my human form. I have two beautiful sons, and I will not let you tear our family apart again. I had to do that because... I understand why you did it. I have learned from my mistakes, but I don't think that you have. Alma pinches her lips together, regarding Thea intensely. Finally, she speaks again. Let me ask you one thing, Thea. Do you believe in what Cain has done? You're asking me as though right and wrong are simple concepts, but mortality is not so clear-cut. Cain did horrible things, but those actions had a cause. We are all product of our interactions with others. This is the last I will speak of it. I'm staying on Earth, Alma, and there is nothing you can do to stop me. But the path, I cannot predict how this will affect... Alma... <laughs> Shove your path up your... <laughs> Alma, the path can change. You're talking about sentient beings. We can make our own decision, and those decisions affect people around us. We are robots. We are mindlessly followers of Cain that he wanted us to be. Your path isn't enough to determine our lives. My sons are much wiser than you or I, Alma. It's time you started to listen to them. Alma looks at the three of you as though she's observing something she can't quite understand. She lets out a reluctant sigh. Very well. I will not interfere any longer. And Ezekiel, Atlas, I thank you for sealing Cain once again. Are you talking to him? Yeah. You call yourself the elemental parent, but maybe you should, like, have a conversation with him about everything he that's gone down. Alma takes your advice seriously. Perhaps you see something that I have been missing. I will go now and think over what you have said. Farewell, Ezekiel. Atlas. Thea. He vanishes before you rise, taking her signature with her. Wow. So that's it. We got our way. It was a lot easier than dealing with Kane, that's for sure. Your mother pulls you both into a gentle hug. She doesn't release you for a long moment. At the last word with Alma. I know Alma well. What you said was has affected her. I'm so proud of you for forcing her to open her eyes. Now, my sons, are you ready to go home? <laughs> Him can barely contain his excitement at the mention of home. Question. Where's home, anyway? Wherever we want it to be. And when we figure it out, you have to invite your friends over to visit. I need to meet all of them. Not to mention your sweetheart, Ezekiel. Mom, don't start embarrassing me already. I have 18 years of embarrassing momming to catch up on. I'm going to get started right away. I have something for you, Mom. 
I know you missed Dad and everything, but and this isn't much, but Alice takes out a half of a photograph. Your mother takes the picture with trembling hands and holds it to her heart. Thank you, Atlas. Todd would be so proud of you two. I love you, Mom. Mother presses a kiss to Alice's cheek and then to yours as well. I love you both, my sons. I love you too, guys. Now, come on, let's go home. Cast one last glance over your shoulder, your heart warm as you look at Pendergast, remembering all your friends and memories you've had here. Then you turn, and Atlas and your mother fall in a step with you. Together, the three of you walk towards the bright light of a brand new day, your family once again whole. Now and always, you have a place where you belong. From the entire team, thanks for playing Illuminalist! They cancelled it, didn't they? Hold on! <laughs> oh. Hold on. I have to I have to check for you guys, okay? I I literally I have to check. Um I I I'm literally checking. So right now, Pixelberry to let you guys know has announced that they're partnering with uh 1001, which is a Chinese company, which again, I'm really not surprised by um because of Nexon um they said that they pursued this opportunity because it gave them the chance to expand stories that uh we love to a new audience who understands their market best oof oof um there are no words yet if this is the final book from their uh from their thing Though, according to my Discord, which you guys should join, a lot of people are saying this is the end. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and check on that. I will let you guys know in Bloodbound, at the very end of that, what's going on. But, uh, wow, if this is the end of yet another book, oof, 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 why do I feel like this is Telltale Games going down the end? Why? Like, they're, they're, they're selling properties to 1001, Nexon, etc. Why do I feel like this is Telltale Games going, or like, literally 2.0? And they're going down the road. Like, they're, 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 they're at least selling things, or making profit through other things, before they, like, just close their doors. Like, I really feel like that's what's happening. So, I'm gonna look into this for you guys. Let me know if you guys find anything, but otherwise, wow. I, I don't know what to say. Um... I'm going to cancel my usual outro because right now I'm just kind of in shell shock. If this is another book they canceled that we all know and love. Um, though a lot of people who are anti Beckett have like harped on the Beckett thing. That's about the only negative thing that I've really had heard coming out. Um, and actually, yes, I just did confirm with our discord. Um, Elementalist main series is over for now. You may see them again in the future. Wow. Congrats, guys. Wow, I'm done. Peace out.